Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 30 minute soul journey session that I'm doing for a client. I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and then get started. Okay, so goals are, can you channel Melissa, Sahara, and Luna, my three best friends from the other side? And please go straight to them. Anything that comes up will be good. Um, no need to do energy work on me. Okay. Hold on a second here. There's quite a like an energy shift. <laughs> Just reading. <sighs> okay. Let me absorb what what we're what we're accomplishing here. I don't know why it's really intense. <laughs> I'm just trying to absorb it. There's all this energy movement going on. Okay. Melissa, Sahara, and Luna. It's really positive. I will say that. Okay. I'm going to relax here. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see what they have to say. Okay. Melissa, Sahara, Luna. All right, so there's a cone shape is the first thing that I'm experiencing. And this cone shape, you know, I'm standing here in front of it, so it's sort of going up into the sky, but it's also revealing itself as a pathway or a road. So we see it sort of wide at the base, so, so right where we are standing, and then in the distance it gets smaller. So they're showing me, and it's a black cone in a black place. And it's a bit challenging because I <laughs> I want to get on this road. I want to get on this path, but it's awkward. So um, as a human being, we would have to defy gravity in order to walk up the side of a wall. And this image is revealing to me that it's going to require you to defy gravity in order to step onto this pathway and allow it to take you to where you want it to take you or where it's meant to take you, or where you hope it will take you. It does feel like a very good pathway though, I will say. Everything about this cone shape feels right. The problem is the awkwardness to it. And if we were to lay this cone shape flat, then it's still kind of odd because pathways aren't necessarily cone shapes. And this is a conundrum. And I do see one version of this image where I'm actually, there's a door that reveals itself on the cone shape and um, instead of stepping onto the pathway somehow, um, then you walk through a doorway and go into the pathway itself. So you just go into it and then these three are giggling because they show me that it's an elevator. It's a secret elevator. <laughs> so how does the human defy gravity to walk up the side of this cone shaped pathway? They um, they find the secret doorway, step into it, and it's an elevator. <laughs> so that's easy. So all you have to do is find the secret door, and then it happens to be an elevator, and it's going to be super easy. It's just going to take you straight to where it's meant to take you. But it does feel like this is an understood thing. Like, um, this pathway doesn't come with a lot of unknowns. I mean, when I'm connecting to it, I don't feel like... Um, there's branches of possibilities. It feels like a straightforward experience, like A to B experience. There's always gonna be stuff between A and B. I mean, that's life, but it feels quite straightforward. Once you find a way to get into the pathway itself, it's gonna be very straightforward. It's a really positive message. And once, once you get into it, I feel that your connection with these three is actually going to enhance itself. It's going to become closer. And in this version, when I, I see you in the elevator going up, I feel like you are going up in vibration to a higher realm where you are meeting their higher vibrational selves. There's a bit of a gap here between where you are and where you're wanting to reach new heights in your life and where these, uh, re these reflections of their high vibrational consciousness are, are guiding you to that level. So we're all at every dimension 
and what your your pathway is calling to you is to work with the, this part of their infinite souls, okay? And so they're guiding you up to a higher level of connection, which is also very positive. And it seems to me like you're going to be able to accomplish this and it's going to be a straightforward pathway, which is really good. There's some things that you need to work on though inside yourself because there, I'm not sure what is resisting inside of you, but I, I'm, I literally, I'm, I'm trying to keep moving forward on this message, but they're showing me something that you need to work on inside yourself. And it feels like there's a resistance inside of you. I'm not going to do any energy work, so I'm not going to analyze whatever the resistance is because if I analyze it, then I'm going to be altering <laughs> the frequency. So I'm just going to say that, okay? But let me see what they have to say about it. <sighs> Things are getting quiet, very quiet. And it feels like um, what we're looking at is changing and it's becoming a circle, a circle room, a room in the shape of a circle and you're standing in the center and there's silence here. It feels much different than where we started and where we started is very hopeful and freeing and easy. Um, it's a little bit fun finding the secret door, right? Here, it feels kind of like I'm in a room, a, a circle, a room that is the shape of a circle. And I feel that there's many possible doorways here, but none of the doorways are showing themselves to me. So I'm just standing here and everything's kind of in the shadow. So I can't exactly see, but I, Abby can feel there are many doors and they're just all in the shadow. So you just pick one, right? But you're hesitating on picking a doorway. I'm going to have these three coming into the room here. So I'm just going to see each one of them, okay? This is going to get a lot more complex. And it's going to go deeper, okay? A lot deeper. Because they're, cause they're, they're saying to me that for you to go up to this level, there are some things that you have to break down that are holding you back still. And that's the resistance that's creating a little bit of a challenge between how do I defy gravity? Oh, I find the secret door. So there's still a little bit of resistance. And that has to do with you have to break away from what what was, basically. And it is holding you back. It's a bit heavy and, and it feels like resistance. And when I try to bring them into this room, it's not for them because I'm bringing them too low dimensionally from where they're meant to be. I'm going to go ahead and totally scratch this scene because I'm feeling too much energetically. And um, so I'm going to try to avoid doing any energy feeling. Okay, just give me a second here. I'm going to, the scene is what it is. We've got the information that we need from this scene. And then I'm asking them to, to speak to me differently. All right, we're going to work with Luna first. There's something quite serene here. And I do feel calm and serene and the quietness is nice to experience it. And it does have that kind of moon-like feel. So a night sky with the moon and the silent moon that sort of reflects across the water. There's something gentle and even magical, serene, peaceful about it. You in doorways right now because she's showing me a doorway. And this one is also complicated because... 
it seems to be right before you, right in front of you, but there's uh, like a ravine between you and the doorway. So why is that? Why is there something preventing you from reaching this doorway? And she's standing here at the doorway, welcome you to come to her. But you are seeing problems in the way, like some reason why you can't just, just get to her. So they're showing me an image of a dragon right now, a big green dragon. It has red colors to it as well. It glistens. It has really articulate scales. It's glossy looking. It's fantastic looking. It's kind of a mix between a medieval dragon and uh, a, it's sort of a Chinese dragon. It kind of has both feels to it. And it's very large. And I see that the dragon is standing where you are. Okay, so here you are. There's a little bit of a gap. There's this doorway and a little platform where Luna is standing. The energy is serene here, but there's still a challenge involved in getting from this point to that point. Now this dragon is over here where you are standing. It's much closer to you. I don't necessarily feel this dragon as a threat. I almost feel like it's in a way trying to help you, but let me see. <sighs> Wondering how deeply you know Luna. I mean, you could know her on a, such a deep level, deeper than you've ever known her before. I mean, so much deeper. She's like an uncharted well of wisdom. And she shows me many stars in the sky and the pathway of the stars. And she shows me boats on the, on the ocean finding their way through the starlight and the guidance of the night sky. And this moon energy. And... There's so much wisdom that she can share with you. And I'm telling you, it's deep. And she takes me deeper inside myself. And it's almost like this uh, um, distance is, is sort of encouraging you to go deeper into your connection with her. Because there's still a gap between you and her. It's just like this cone shape. There's still a gap between this dimensional space and this higher dimensional space. So there's still a gap and we're still looking for the doorway, but it's all um, to go deeper inside yourself. I mean, she shows me so many constellations, known and unknown, <laughs> um, as in not just about Earth, but all over the universe constellations we would never know because we're not viewing it from those planets, right? But she's very connected with direction and stars and guiding. Uh, and she keeps showing me big ships that are being guided through storms or through, um, like, through through the ocean like it's, it's it's extraordinary she's guiding and she's doing a good job of it i mean i can feel that she's a really um she's a fantastic guide <laughs> but she's not just about guidance i mean there's constellations inside yourself that you are yet to discover and you're yet to explore those and the direction those constellations are taking you and she has access to that information and it's not just about sort of like um, friendship is definitely a part of this connection, but there's work to do here. There's actual student teacher type work going on here. I mean, taking you into the depths of who you are, deep stuff, F experiencing her voice in a way you've never heard her speaking to you before. So I'm giving you access to that frequency because it's important that you feel tuned into it. <sighs> and 
the colors are s surreal, and I, I would say that the closest I could define them would be uh, blues, darker blues, purple that has some sort of mercury color mixed into it, and silver. And so these colors are intermixing, but I feel like there's unknown colors to my color spectrum going on here. And she kind of smiles at me and says that I, I wouldn't have perceived it, but there's something having to do with neon green as well. All right, so I'm just relaxing you down so that you can reach this frequency of connection with her. That's really what this is all about, is you accessing your friends in a more meaningful way than you've ever experienced them before, and you will accomplish this. That's a, that's a straight, that, I mean, that pathway is obvious. And you'll find the secret door because it's all you discovering what is inside yourself. And you have great guides because these three are great guides. And the more that I sort of tune you to this frequency, so it's like an attunement um, of your energy field to her in this uh, on this vibrational pattern, um, it's giving you kind of like a new telephone line to help you um, feel and experience and hear her on a new level. And I'm seeing this sort of uh, gap disappearing. And it, and it it's much, gets much easier for you to feel a closeness and a connection with her in a new way. It's really good. No wonder there's so much energy movement just reading your <laughs> goals. <laughs> this is big. This is big deal stuff. Okay. So there's something quite medieval and uh, like the Asian dragon and it's enchanting. It's magical. There's nothing threatening to it. It's almost like protective in a way. And it's beautiful. It's our articulate beauty and it's art as well. There's something art and creative about it. And the very intense, um, very vivid colors of the dragon. Very vivid, rich colors, bold. And you can see them and the dragon is really quite a centerpiece of beauty. But it also has a symbolic meaning and it feels um, protective. It feels um, like it also is sort of a, I guess you could say its own constellation of wisdom. So if you go into this dragon, you will find something more about yourself within it. Also connected to her. And I do see that this doorway where she's standing... Um, it's quite a large castle and it's not a typical castle. I mean, it's almost like um, like a cake. You have a this lower part, there's a circle, and then there's a circle, and then there's a circle. So it gets like smaller cakes on top, right? Um, but this goes into the sky, like way, way up into the sky. You can't even see the top of it. So a sort of um, elongated cake shapes that get smaller and smaller up at the top. And it's like this extraordinary castle tower type thing. It's very intense and awing to see it. The colors are dark here, but the dark isn't, um, the dark feels balanced. The dark feels very balanced here. And it feels a bit enchanting and magical, like um, fairy tale magic, it does. That's an important part of, um, of her, who she is. And it's, uh, it's, it's not so much the fairy tale aspect, it's the wisdom aspect, it's the guidance, it's the story of life itself. And the magic that exists within the story of life itself. She could be a really great storyteller too, if you were to ask her to tell you a story, she would tell you a story. Because this Luna is also connects with the stars and the stars tell, tell stories. So that's more about her. She's going to guide you into this ta this castle. And it, it's, it feels like it's full of older parts of yourself that you need to be introduced to in order to see more of who you are. And it is deeper. And it's not just like we're going to have a tea party on a sunny day and yay! 
it's gonna be great. <laughs> it's more like going into the intense castle of the depths of you and the constellation stories of your own soul. <laughs> like, it's deep, okay? And so she's, she's expressing this. She's, she's cool. So there, that's uh, Luna. I'm going to see if I can tap into Sahara next. Let's see. Or Melissa. I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there and see who wants to come next. And they feel a little bit quiet right now. And I'm just waiting to see. So Sahara is just, what I see here is two, okay? And then in between these two, there's sort of like a bubble that's trying to come out from in between. And Sahara is sort of like, a, I don't know, is she a tree or something? But it's, it's, it's like orange, it really intense oranges and really intense reds. And you can't see what is like a tree trunk and then tree branches and leaves. It's all sort of a collage of these colors. And then it makes kind of the shape of a tree. And then Melissa's on the other side here. I don't know, it's Sahara is just really captivating my attention because of the very intense colors. And so I'm just seeing this right now. So I'm going to go towards this tree, this Sahara tree. Okay, there's something, all right, this, something that hurts here, like an anger, feeling of anger. All right, that's quickly subsiding. All right, so she says that um, she's sort of opening up her being in order for us to travel within who she is, to go into who she is. So you can't really have a friend that you only know from the way they look and the way they dress because friendship isn't about their appearance. Friendship is about going into their own soul and discovering what is there, right? So Sahara isn't about the way she's expressing herself um, on the outside. It's you have to take a journey into who she is. And there's a bit of complexity about this because she, she seems a, a little more complicated. But it's also good. It's also very, very good. I feel, again, like um, you're going to be getting to know these three in a way, a more meaningful way, like a deeper way than you've ever connected to them before. Because I even feel that Sahara is uh, saying the same thing, that um, you're taking a journey to getting to know her in a new way as well, just like Luna. And I am guarantee Melissa is the same. But there's a lot of excitement too. When I combine these three energies together, it's so much excitement for you. Um, they're all working together to help you. They're all working together to guide you. And there's a lot of joyful feminine energy. Like I can even see like girls, like three girls, like having a blast and they're like doing girl things. Like, and they're giggling and they're laughing and then this and then they're like that and then, like all this girl energy. And so they're kind of like that when you move, when you like merge the three together, they're like so excited that we're helping you and guiding you and we're helping you know just, but when you start individualizing them it's like wow the depths of who they are on an individual level is super so let's see about sahara here okay she is uh, she is mis there's something mysterious <sighs> something unspoken something un like not known as of yet because when i walk into her light into these colors i feel a bit um like like i'm in a new environment and i don't know what to make of it and it feels alien or foreign and there's no real direction of where do i go or how do i interpret this how do I even interpret this? <laughs> She's quite delightful because then suddenly she comes. So this is sort of like you getting to know her in this new way and the way that that can feel. And I see her 
um, finding you within herself. And she comes as like a, a, a little, like a little girl, like eight or nine, but she's very uh, playful and very super loving, really great listener. I know it's a such it's it's a child but it's an adult energy as well it's a developed energy but it's playful and youthful and it's a super good listener. I mean I feel like you could vent to to Sahara for years and years and years and you would find it so therapeutic because venting to a good listener is ridiculously therapeutic <laughs> good listeners are like so super blessings for the planet <laughs> we need more good listeners just let me vent just let just listen to me vent. <laughs> she's like that she's like a super good listener and uh you, you do you, you share a lot of what you're going through with her and she listens to every single detail, every detail. She's a very good listener. And I experience her slowing you down a little bit to comfort and relax you. And it, it allows you to let her into yourself more deeply. So where she's opening up to you, allowing you to enter into her essence in a more deeper way and a new way um she's now like working with your energy to um open you up um so that she can be a part of you too so that way it's a balanced uh, relationship it's not you just going in and finding out you know experiencing her and expressing yourself within her love for you but now it's 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 you opening up and allowing her love to enter you too and it becomes like a very like a much more balanced connection and friendship and it's very 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 loving i mean it's it's a it's such a good friendship that it's it's like better than friends, you know? <laughs> but it's really friends. It's really good friends, but it's almost better than friends. That's what it's like. But I don't feel like the that intimacy connection it feels so enriching, like an, the most enriching friendship anybody could ever ask for. And she's bright too. And that brightness, um, it's like she wants to bring that brightness of this firelight into yourself to make you feel brighter on the inside too. And you'll only, she can only do that if you open up to receiving more of who she is. And give me just a moment here. Again, I feel like you and Sahara are going to be connecting to in a, a more meaningful way than you have ever known before. Because even right now when I'm exploring your energetic balance to this, there are parts of you that resist um, that beautiful, spectacular light and love because those parts of you need to be healed. So that's resistance. And we all resist love on some level, even if in our minds we're like, no, I never resist love. Um, love gets more and more and more enriching and empowering and it makes you more vulnerable. And that's what love does. And so she's wanting to bring more of her love into you to help help with this so that you're healing more the parts of you that are resisting that love. And that's those types of resistance, you can say all day long in your head, I don't resist Sahara at all, but you do have parts of your inner collective that are that have been hurt and broken by love in a way that they they are afraid of how beautiful that love can be and nurturing that love can be when they've been broken by love, right? So we gotta heal that stuff. And she wants to. She wants to heal the parts of you that have been broken by love, that are resisting love. But again, I mean, she is so good with with um, honoring uh, distance, I guess you could say. Kind of like, what are you ready for? And I will only come that close to you. 
And what are you ready for? Well, I will only come, I'm not going to overstep my bound boundaries. Like I'm not going to cross any lines with you. Um, but it's so, her friendship energy is just so absolutely, um, it's wonderful. So it, it helps let your guard down more. So you feel a little bit more open and trusting of that love. And the more that you bond with her, you're just naturally allowing more of her love within you and al allowing that love to heal. And it would be really powerful for you to say that to Sahara, that um, the parts of you that you haven't gotten to know yet that are resisting of her, um, you really are ready to heal that. And you would be honored to work with her um, energy um, to help do that. And you can talk to her about anything. I mean, you can talk to her while you're grocery shopping, or you could talk to her when you feel really sad, or you could talk to her when you, you're watching a movie and there's a weird part and you're like blown away by it. You can talk to her literally any time, any day. I mean, she's great like that. She's a really good listener and she loves to listen. She loves to hear everything you have to say. Like she does, <laughs> never gets bored of it. And uh, she keeps showing me that um, she welcomes you in as deep as you want to go into the love that she has for you. So um, she she would like to um, more deeply connect with you, though. Not just you going into the love she has for you, but allowing yourself to open up more to the love than that she has for you inside yourself. Like, um, there's something about the balance here of how you are going to her or versus how you're allowing her to come to you. And um, there's something about that. But she keeps saying that everything's beautiful between us. Everything is beautiful. So not to see that there's any imbalance here. She's just wanting to show you this. Just something to think about. But she's very warm like the sun or the Sahara Desert. So I understand why you would name her this because she's she's utilizing those types of colors as well. Those warm colors. Those fire colors. And she is a warm energy. Like she will warm you. <sighs> She's nice, really nice. I'm going to see what, <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm running close, out of time, but let's see what I can find out about Melissa real quick, okay? She seems to be the one that's like furthest away from the conversation. So it's like Luna is like first, like I could get to her next, like then Sahara and then Melissa seems to be the furthest one back here. Um, so let me see. Hmm. She's very quiet. And uh, she's very quiet. There's a mystery here about why. And she she's presenting herself as far more human than the other two. That's not just because you're naming her Melissa a human name, but she does emanate more more humanness about her. And I see that you're you're trying to get closer with her, but there there's something where I'm not sure what she's going through right now. It's just very quiet. She's not talkative here. She's not revealing a lot of the mysteries. Like she just is a mystery right now. And perhaps it's just not time yet for her to speak because I've got, I mean, Luna and Sahara have made very powerful messages that you need to hear those messages first and foremost. And I guarantee Melissa has a powerful message as well. It's just, these are the messages that you need right now. That is it. That's all I meant to share with you for right now. Again, I will say when these three energies do combine, they are so girly and delighted to guide you and help you and to be a part of your life. They, they are so honored to be a part of your life. So there's something quite delightful in the way that they are allowed access to you and to helping you. And that's really neat. <laughs> 
Give me just a moment here. I'm still kind of lingering in the energies. Okay. <laughs> that was so beautiful and cool. Hmm. Thank you so much for sharing this experience with me and sharing it with everybody. I know that messages like these are super valuable. I know they're going to really help you in your life, but other people will find value in these messages as well. So thank you. And um, I just feel really cheerful right now. <laughs> okay. And uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.